Hi guys, so last time we did TXT and today we're going slightly further back in time for the concept kings themselves, Vix. Let's go. Right then guys, so as always a few disclaimers before we start. If you don't already know, I have a Patreon account and on there I do reactions and I'm going to work out a few other things to do as well that people on there want me to do. Um, if you would consider more content or you'd like a little bit more like that, feel free to follow me on there. The link will be in the description. It'll mean an awful lot if you would possibly follow me on there. It means a lot to me. Also, if you want to follow me on Twitter as well, I'll put my link in the description to that as well. Um, it'll mean a lot to me as always. I'd like to really interact with you guys on that platform a lot more and talk about music and things that are happening because loads of comebacks happening and stuff like that. So that'll be really Fun. Okay, so Vix, um, yeah, they're really good singers. All six of them are very good and operate in very different areas. I was told that they had two people operating in the higher tones, medium tones, and lower tones, and yeah, that's exactly correct. Exactly correct. Um, one thing I will just want to point out: I have a bit of a hot take in this video, so please just bear with me and listen to my like reason analysis as to why. Um, and just go in knowing that high doesn't automatically mean better. Um, without further ado, they're insane singers. I can't wait to talk about all six of them. Let's just go. Vocal ranking of Vix. Okay, so in last place is Ravi. That doesn't mean he's bad at all. Just the other five guys are kind of fantastic. He's only here on virtue that his voice has kind of the least amount of areas it works well in, but that's the only real reason for a main rapper that has no reason to be able to sing. He kind of can. So let's look at him sing. <laughs> Girl, I remember it just like it wasn't yesterday. A third. <laughs> Okay, so Ravi is one of two baritones in the group. His voice is a bit fuller, a bit thicker, and a bit deeper. And because of that, obviously, in the actual songs of Vix that are written in an absurdly high key that I'll mention at some other time, um, he doesn't really get to shine much in those. But in songs that he's done and performances that he's done, his voice has really sounded very quite good. He has a naturally thicker, more full configuration. He uses a lot of chord closure, which is very good. I mean, his tuning's pretty solid. He has a nice, thick, dark tone that you can actually get into a few different areas with. The only issue with his voice is it doesn't really have too many places it can go in necessarily. His voice isn't quite as low as it sounds, so when he kind of brings it a little bit lower, it doesn't sound supernatural. It more works really well in this kind of middle place where he sounds quite full, quite scratchy, and quite gravelly. It has a lot of character in his voice. That's the main strength of Ravi's voice. You know it's his. It's got a lot of character, and the chord closure means that he can tune well, and he has an easier time kind of getting into higher areas. The only thing he does a little bit that's kind of unfortunate is he stays so full and so connected that when he goes up, he doesn't really lighten his tone super efficiently, so it's a bit of a lottery as to what happens. Um, generally what tends to have is he lightens it a little bit and opens quite a nice belt sound. He has a pretty unexpectedly decent light belt when he kind of lightens the tone, gets rid of a little bit of the chord closure and goes into that area. It's unexpected, it's nice, but it hasn't got too much in the way above that because he doesn't really place the voice in his head or use much nasality or anything like that. He just kind of keeps the full sound and goes up as high as it will go and that basically gives him a ceiling. Um, the ceiling's pretty good for a kind of deeper voiced guy. Um, but obviously because he doesn't lighten the tone like mega efficiently or place it anywhere other than really in his chest It hasn't really got the areas to go above that everybody else's sort of does And then when he goes lower than his middle voice it also doesn't resonate as well as somebody else that I'll mention in a second Um, so yeah, Rafi's voice is basically, it's good, it has a nice place it works well and it's got a lot of character Sounds very full, the coordination is absolutely there, there's no glaring placement issues It just has a bit of a ceiling and has kind of the least place his voice works in really well in comparison to everybody else in the group See, so yeah, I don't think Rafi's a bad singer at all, I think he's very good, I think the middle of his voice is really strong and full and has a nice configuration there just because he doesn't really like this tone too proficiently or place it too far in his head as he goes higher than that lovely open belt he does showcase on occasion there isn't really much in the way of going above that and his low notes obviously aren't quite as good as somebody with his voice type would kind of suggest so yeah um he sounds pretty good when he's rapping got a nice scratchy full tone just doesn't really have too many places to go really
but he's still a good singer. Okay, so the people that actually sing kind of in Vic songs, Hongbin doesn't have even the weakest voice necessarily. He's the only person kind of with a slight placement issue, really, um, and it kind of limits his voice in a certain way. But he's still got an amazing, deep, beautiful voice. Let's watch him sing. <laughs> Okay, so a lot of people mention the duality in Hongbin's voice. That's why I've put him above Ravi. His voice works in more areas really efficiently and really well. Okay, so he's known for being the baritone. It's often called the baritone in Vicks. And yeah, here's his part that goes That kind of pitch. He's the one that has that down by far the best. His voice, where it works really well, I'll focus on the positives the first bit, is just beautiful. His thicker, fuller, naturally deep tone is so good. He also uses vocal fry onsets a lot, which is where he goes, yeah, and you kind of enter a note like that. It basically gets you in a sort of area where it's low but lacks compression. It's really quite cleverly used for lower notes. And he has this part of his voice down very well. His lower end of his voice as a baritone vocalist is absolutely beautiful and fantastic. And as he brings his voice up, he does one of two things. One is very good and very efficient, which is why I think he's a very good singer, which is basically where he kind of lightens it quite a bit, gets into a higher belt range, and but he uses a little bit of nasality to thin it out and it kind of sounds pretty full, pretty resonant and pretty nice. For a low voice guy, his upper and mid notes still sound really easy, really strong and really nice. And um, which shows that the chord closure he has down low isn't affecting him too much as he brings it up. Sometimes, mainly in Vic songs, he goes hyper nasal to try and lighten his tone out massively, and that is a little bit of a detriment to his upper notes and gives him a bit of a ceiling, and is the only kind of placement issue really in the Vic's vocal line, which is kind of insane. Um, so what that basically does is it kind of gets his voice stuck a little bit, and instead of using it to thin out like he does sometimes and use a nice open resonant sound a lot of the time, it kind of gets his voice stuck a little bit and he uses a little bit of a throaty configuration, I've noticed. As he goes into his higher belts, if he's singing in a baritone key, this problem is essentially alleviated, um, but when he's singing in that kind of tenor key that Vic's operating, his voice does get a little bit stuck in his throat because of the nasality present and it's not always used to thin out super efficiently. So that's the only reason Hongbin's vocals are kind of this low on the list. I still think he's got an insane and voice with good duality and a nice range which so is the only person that kind of limits what he can do in the upper range based on placement and that's because obviously instead of using a nice open full resonant sound and placing it in his head which would kind of give him another dynamic on top of what he already has which would make him insane and unfair um, he kind of gets a little bit stuck in the nasal placement and his throat kind of takes a little bit of beating sometimes and some extra compression where he doesn't want there to be. So yeah, Hongbin's voice is very good. The range is very good. Sounds beautiful down low, amazing in his mid-range. And as he goes up, it can sound very good, but also has a habit sometimes of getting a little bit stuck, which kind of limits where he can go from here. Um, so yeah, that's the only reason I've put him fifth. He's still a fantastic singer. And if you like his voice the best, I get it. Baritones are cool. We're cool. Um, so I fully understand that. But yeah, to me, he's the only real major placement issue that limits where his voice can go in terms of going into an upper area. Okay, so to me, Hyuk's voice is, I've seen a lot of people call it underrated, and yeah, it kind of is. He didn't sing too much in Vic's song, which is kind of confusing, because his voice was really quite good. Let's watch him sing. I'm 
my phone up And baby I've been moving on And I think Okay, so Hyuk might also be kind of a light baritone or a kind of lower tenor. I'm not fully sure, but his voice is very similar to Hong Bin's in terms of the range it can operate in. He has a lot of facets to his voice, a lot of areas it works really well in, just doesn't have like a huge kind of obvious placement issue like Hong Bin does to get into his higher areas. His high notes still aren't achieved as insanely efficiently as everybody else coming up, which is why I've kind of placed him here, but his voice is really quite good. Okay, so Hyuk's low range, again, is quite full, it's quite thick. He has a very good chord closure, but also occasionally sings with a little bit extra breath to kind of lighten that tone and get into a higher area. Because, again, as it goes up, it gets a bit breathy, sometimes it can get a little bit stuck and stops the kind of efficiency of a really good strong mix, but more often than not, Hyuk's voice stays quite full and quite heavy in his upper area, which is good, it means he tunes well to it and has a nice, strong, full sound, but because he does stay so heavy, a lot of the time when he tries to lighten his tone a little bit higher to get into bigger belt areas occasionally it does pull off and sound really good and the openness of his voice sounds fantastic but sometimes he stays a little bit too light which again makes the voice kind of a little bit weaker as he gets into that higher area and goes more for a head voice sort of placement which limits a really upper mix that pretty much everybody else coming up kind of has um, or sometimes he stays a little bit too beefy and a little bit too connected which basically just stops where he can go but he doesn't have an obvious kind of throatiness in his sound or like an obvious kind of issue with the compression or anything just because he's so heavy you can tell that's kind of his big and as loud as you can go and it won't really go much higher than that unless he kind of lightens a little bit more efficiently so yeah Hyuk's voice when he kind of goes into his upper area if he opens his mouth wide and places it in his head which I have seen him do on occasion his voice sounds full and raspy and open it sounds very good and a lot of resonance in that sort of area but more often than not he kind of has a little bit of a ceiling not because of nasality or because of kind of a throatiness just because he's really full and really high and that's kind of as high and as full as you can kind of go unless you lighten and when he lightens he tends to go a little bit breathier which kind of alleviates his upper mix and that's Hyuk's only real problem. He doesn't use his upper end of his voice as insanely efficiently as other people do. And he sings kind of more gentle and a little bit quieter more often than not. But he's got a good range, works really well in a lot of places. Just limits himself slightly vocally in his upper areas, um, but doesn't have like a huge placement issue, which is why I've put him fourth. And he could easily have an argument for third because his voice is really stable and really consistent. Just kind of lacks the upper extension due to kind of using either a little bit too much breath or a little bit too much chord closure and not that beautiful balanced place in the middle and that's the only negative of Hyuk's voice he's still a very very good singer and I wish he kind of did get more lines because I had to look the more solo stages for him which is fine it showcases his voice really well but yeah he's a great singer <laughs> Okay, please don't shout at me. Leo is literally the definition of an insanely impressive vocalist that uses his voice kind of a little bit inefficiently to kind of get the full result. He is the main vocalist because he operates in the higher frequencies and his voice is absolutely amazing and insane, just isn't used as technically efficiently as the next two guys coming up. Anyway, let's watch him sing and I'll try my best to break it down. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, I'll start with kind of a general overview. Leo's voice is very clearly very high, very thin, and almost kind of feminine in the keys it operates in. He uses his voice a little bit inefficiently, but gets some absolutely ridiculous results. Like, if I could sing as high as he could all the time, I would do that a lot. It's just the openness and resonance in the upper end of his voice is absolutely amazing. However, because of the way he kind of sings all the way through his range, the way he gets there is a little bit sketchy, but also insanely impressive and gives him like this facet that most people would dream of. Okay, obviously Leo only sings lower. He has next to no kind of sound at all. He breaks down like around an F3 or so. I'm not a, an expert on specific notes, but he doesn't have pretty much any chord closure down the lower end of his voice. Because of that, to kind of beef up his sound in the upper end of his voice, he uses a bit of a throaty configuration, which while has an insanely incredible result, which is why I've put him third, um, rather than kind of a little bit lower, because the result that he gets is insane, and he showcased out his career that what he can do is absolutely insane. He doesn't have much to work with down this lower end of his voice at all, and for a male singer, that's kind of weird. He does start a lot of songs, but it's always very breathy, very soft, and lacks chord closure. So when he goes up, because he hasn't got that feeling of a chord closure, in order to mix this very, very light, thin sound, he uses a bit of a throaty placement like a ah! which yes gets you really high but also doesn't like feel great but having said that what he does he also places the voice in his head as well as kind of in his throat to get more of the sound and more of the projection which gives him this really massive upper extension which while he achieves very efficiently i have heard as he kind of goes a little bit further down away from that big mix the tuning falls away a little bit or it can sound a little bit brittle that's just because he doesn't have the feeling of chord closure kind of all the way throughout his range which limits kind of everything except from this insane mix and this insane mix is insane. I'm incredibly jealous of the fact that he can sing this high this often. And when he's in this placement, it sounds very consistent, very good, very forward and very nice. But it is a little bit from the throat and you can hear that it's from the throat in comparison to the two guys coming up. So to me, he's the bridge gap. He's the main vocalist because he works in this really high area. And obviously that's where most of the songs were written. He's one of two people that can sing in this key. That's obvious, his voice is high, it's super high and it sounds insane in this really high head dominant mix. But it's also got a bit of extra compression because he's using his throat rather than... He's, he's essentially the definition of someone that doesn't use support. Again, I don't really like this word, but it kind of makes sense in this case. He sings, basically he shouts up to his highest notes in a really kind of throaty mix, which sounds amazing but isn't kind of as supportive as it possibly could be using kind of chord closure throughout the rest of his range. Um, so yeah, Leo's voice is insane. The vocal potential that man has is absolutely absurd. Just his voice would be made a little bit better and a little bit more efficient all the way through if he sacrificed a little bit of the kind of highness and a little bit of the throaty power and just getting a more open full sound throughout his range and using a little bit more chord closure. Um, having said all of that, just to justify why he's third and not second or first, Leo's voice is still insane. I'm very jealous. He's an amazing singer and Vix would not be the same without someone that can sing in that higher frequency that easily um, and his mix is absolutely beautiful but except from that upper mix his voice does kind of limit itself because of the lack of chord closure and I, I hope you understand that and don't kill me but yeah <laughs> Okay, so I undenied when I was first in my research whether N was second, third, or fourth. I couldn't decide. And then as I listen to more and more, he's definitely second. The efficiency in his voice is beautiful. Let's watch him sing. <laughs> I'm 
아마 없을 거야 안가요 달리면 Okay, so you may be thinking, Sam, through all of your videos, anybody who uses a little bit too much breath or too much of a soft configuration is always lower on the list. What are you doing? Yeah, you're right. N is by far the person I've heard so far that uses breathiness and lightness by far the best and most efficiently. Okay, so he's known for his very sweet, soft, gentle vocals, but that is nowhere near all he's got to his voice. So, the majority of the time he sings this kind of lovely light kind of way. It's very easy, it's very soft, there's a little bit of extra breath that kind of lightens the tone nice and efficiently, but normally that gets you stuck. It doesn't get him stuck at all because he has the two words I always say, chord closure. In his low range when he scoops down, it's not an airy, whispery, breathy sound. He goes like, ah, and he kind of has this full configuration. That means he's used to the, his feeling of his chords together and he knows how to beef up his sound and do it really efficiently. But because he uses a naturally breathy or softer configuration to get into the higher end of his voice, he can maintain that chord closure as well as using the breath and get into this really easy, quite powerful and really resonant, easy, open, full kind of area. It's not as powerful as number one and it's nowhere near as high as Leo, but it's utilized and got to so, so much more efficiently. His voice is just the definition. If you want to sing soft, but also not limit yourself, just watch what he does. It's absolutely incredible. The call closure from the bottom, the softness and lightness as he brings it up into this higher area. Then as he kind of mixes those two together, he, he favors a kind of slightly softer sound, but he doesn't use loads of throaty configuration or use a lot of compression or really sound like he's shouting to get to his high notes. His high notes sound easy. And yes, they're not super high. He hasn't got a mega power vocal or an upper extension that's as crazy as Leo or as crazy as number one. But N's voice is achieved so very well and very efficiently and technically. This is kind of how you do this style exactly. Would the breath in this, would it be better if the breath in this wasn't kind of there? A little bit possibly. But because he uses that as, as a stylistic preference and he knows how that feels to lighten his tone, when he gets into his upper area using the chord closure and that breathness together, it just sounds so easy, yet resonant, yet powerful, yet not shouted and not overbearing. So basically N's voice is just used efficiently. It's a very efficient, beautiful voice and I think that he is an amazing singer and uses it a little bit more efficiently and technically adeptly than Leo does. It's not as impressive, certainly not, but it's more sustainable um, and it's easier. And it's just an all-round kind of more achievable sound for most people who aren't are blessed with like a stupidly high voice. So yeah, ends of vocals are amazing. But there's one guy left and he's vocal Jesus. <sighs> Ken. I think there's a chance I might be in love with Ken. The 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 guy is insane. He's actually crazy. Um, take everything I said about Leo's pitch and end efficiency and just <laughs> smash them together. Let's let's just watch. <laughs> Ken is, he's a god. Ken's voice, god, right. Okay, when I was researching, 
I, I knew Super Junior had good vocals. I knew EXO had good vocals. I knew Vix had good vocals. I didn't know they had this guy. Like, no one told me about Ken. Right, okay, so what, what does he do with his voice? Bloody everything. Honestly, the guy's versatility is off the charts. His placement is off the charts. And things that he can do with his voice just make me want to scream because I can't do them and it's not fair. Um, so basically, right, Leo, he, he's quite thin. He shoots up into a higher pitch. It gets these areas really well. Ken has his areas kind of at the same time. But all the way through his voice, he's got... Again, support. Don't like the word, but he's a definition of a supported vocalist. His range is a little bit thicker and a little bit darker than Leo's, but he can operate in very, very similar pitches because he uses his voice so insanely efficiently and has such a ridiculous power potential that I want to cry because I don't have that and it's not fair. So, Lauren of his voice, I didn't think it was the best part of his range. It certainly wasn't. It's not as good as some other people in the list because he's a tenor vocalist, but he still has a lower range. I saw a kind of clip where he was going, oh, and he was kind of making it a bit thicker and a bit darker, which shows to me he knows how to use his chords together. He knows how to control the area of his voice. It's really solid and really well. And he has chord closure that he knows how to bring up into a very efficient mixed place. He can use the middle of his voice so very efficiently, but he chooses either to be a little bit softer and a little bit more breathy, which it kind of results in a lovely kind of, easy, sustainable sound in the middle, or he can beef it up and be belting all the way through, but his belts don't sound like they're using an extra bit of throatiness, or they're kind of pulling too much. His voice sounds so balanced in the middle. It's so insanely powerful. Like, even when he's in his, like, his, his uh, kind of mid-belt, or he's like the ha kind of really upper belt, he's using his vocals so insanely efficiently to get into those places because of his placement. He has a lot of chord closure in the chest voice, but he also places it forward and in his head with a tiny little bit of nasality to thin it all out which gets him into this kind of upper extension that is just so powerful so balanced so well achieved and has such chord closure that it's not a problem and as he kind of goes above that and is really really high notes he crescendos up but lightens his tone doesn't try and add way too much weight like a lot of people do they kind of like go ah, ah and their voice kind of goes without adding too much compression too much power he alleviates some of the chest weight puts it slightly more in his head thins it out a little bit and achieves these stupid bloody resonant crazy high belts he also has a clip where he sings along to Adele more or less in the same key and that's just stupid that that takes so much control in a mixed voice to have that it's absolutely borderline absurd um yes you may think I'm overreacting to Ken slightly no I'm not no I'm not overreacting Ken's voice is absolutely incredible and it's impressive but it's technically efficient it's achieved well it sounds beautiful it has a lot of versatility it's got a lot of dynamics the lower end is pretty good the middle part is absolutely controlled to perfection with either breathier sounds or more full sounds his upper belt is very famous and absolutely incredible because of the placement his upper upper extension is also really 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 well achieved is it slightly inefficient compared to some people maybe does it sound awesome yes it does um yeah <sighs> That's basically all there is to say on Ken's voice. If you don't know what it sounds like, listen to him. It's it's a treat. It, 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 it was a nice... Literally, I was doing my research. I was thinking, yeah, this is good. This is good. And what the hell, Ken? This is like... <laughs> mental. Right, I'm going to calm down. Sorry. Yeah, basically, if you put Leo first, fair enough. I understand why. Ken is number one. He absolutely is number one. He's absolutely insane. And he's probably already in my top ten for a vocalist list because his voice was just honey to my ears. And yeah, his placement's insane. His versatility is insane. His voice is insane. And he is insane. Love you, Ken. My God. Anyway, um, thank you so much for requesting Vix. As you can tell, I had fun with this one. Um, next up, I'll be doing a ranking on the boys, which will take me a while. I'm also moving house, so if it's like if it's a little bit late, I do apologise. And there is like eleven of them, so just bear with me. I also might be chucking a new series in. You know that whole ranking, not ranking, kind of doing analysis on soloists and main vocalists. Yeah, that might be coming soon. We'll we'll see how it goes. Anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye.